come and get me! Are these the best the universe could send against me? Such a puny force. Peter! You're welcome. Now let's go defeat Thanos. My hammer! How can I fight without Mjolnir? Let's do it, Thor. Together. Away from me, you fools! You'll die for what you've done, bub! I don't think so. Hit him with everything you've got! Wanda! Scott! Strange. Can you retrieve my hammer? Of course. Finally! He's dead. You murdered him. You cold-hearted monster! Such an emotional outburst. Not at all what I expected from the invincible Iron Man. You did it, Cloak! But can you hold him? Don't know. I think I... No! Supremacy cannot be imprisoned! My divinity is absolute! Yours is a false godhood, Thanos. And all false gods eventually fall. Good god! Thor! Back off, prune face. No one's busting up Thor while Spider-Man's around. Turn and face me, Thanos! Finally, the reserves are called in. The Guardians of the Galaxy. We'll prove to be your downfall. You suffer from delusions of grandeur. It's not over yet, Thanos. Yes, it is over, Avenger. I won. As long as one man still stands against you, Mad Titan, you'll never be able to claim victory. Noble sentiments from one who's about to die. Thanos. Adam Warlock. We tried to do this the easy way and failed. Now begins the conflict I strove to avoid. It is your turn now. <laughs> That's the best you can bring to challenge me? A child? Not even the galaxy's mightiest heroes could challenge me. What can this boy do? This is for Uncle Johnny, my sister, and my parents. Hey kid, I got you. Look there! Thanos' body. That means Thanos is now vulnerable. What? No! Your reign as a supreme being is a blasphemy which cannot be allowed to stand. And by the power of the Infinity Gems, let everything be as it was before Thanos' snap. No! Sean Dustin spent time in federal and state prison for drug trafficking and fraud. Upon release in 2006, he had nothing but the clothes on his back, a bag of mail, and legal paperwork. In 2010, he kicked a longtime methamphetamine habit and started the long climb back up the ladder of life. This is the Nowhere to Go But Up podcast. If you want transparency and authenticity, you're in the right place. This is the Nowhere to Go But Up podcast, and this is Sean Dustin.
What's up? This is the Nowhere to Go But Up podcast, and I am your host, Sean Dustin. Ah, happy Friday, everybody. Uh, if this is your Friday, or if it's a Friday in the country that you're in, got through another week. Thank goodness. Um, so if you are on YouTube, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button in the corner somewhere and, uh, thumbs the video up. And if you're on Facebook, do me a favor and also, uh, like and share this video podcast platform. Same thing. Subscribe, uh, on whatever platform you're on that helps to make me more visible in the podcast platforms themselves. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, uh, go to my Patreon page and there's links for that in the bio or not the bio. <laughs> there's links for that in the, uh, in the description or the show notes. Yeah. And I'll, actually all of the links to all my guests and what they're doing and me as well are all available in the show notes or the description. If you like the streaming app that I'm using, uh, it's called StreamYard. And you want to do it or you want to check it out and, uh, you want to use my affiliate link, go ahead, StreamYard right there. Uh, if you like it, you can, uh, sign up and get a $10 discount when you go for the paid $25 version. And then that'll help actually, you know, give me a little bit of cash and a kickback to help support my show. Let's see. What else do we got here? Uh, if you, have, you want to connect to the show, Linktree is the best way. Uh, you'll find all of my links there for social media, merch, Patreon, uh, everything, every play, every, everywhere this show is at is in my link tree. Let me slow down a little bit. I'm getting a little hype up, up in here and spitting out some words. Um, yeah. So my guests today, a uh, little backstory on them at one point. Uh, actually in episode five, I interviewed Melissa, uh, Medina <clears throat> and she's a voice actress. And I asked her, you know, I was curious about how you got into voice acting and, you know, kind of what her path to entry was. And she had told me, uh, her, her like secret sauce and how she did it. And I went and, and tried it myself and I'd never voice acted before. Never did any of that kind of stuff, right? I just, you know, people always say, hey, you got a good voice, so you should be a voice actor. You should do this. You should be in radio. You should do all these other things. And I was like, all right, well, let me try it. I, you know, I want to try it because I want to put it out there for people to listen to. I want to make sure, you know, I'll guinea pig it myself. So I did. And I ended up landing like four different things. And one of them was the uh, Lego Avengers the infinity gauntlet episode or series or, or something like that. But my guests, they're, they're going to tell you, they'll, they'll tell you all about it. And I actually have a clip to, to share with you of what they do. Um, all the way from Brazil, we've got Daniel Lucas, also known as Kip Golden Flyer. Hello there. And Leonardo. Hello guys. How are you? Very good. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Awesome. Awesome. What's uh what's the weather like down in Brazil right now? Hot. <laughs> I wish I wish it was hot here. It's it's almost it, it doesn't know if it wants to be hot or cold right now. It's in between. It keeps bouncing back and forth. I'm in northern California, so so I'm going to start one at a time here. Okay. So we'll start with Daniel. Daniel, do me a favor and, uh, explain a little bit about like how you, like who you are and how you got into the, into this kind of genre of, uh, stop, was it stop motion? Yeah, that's right. Um, since I was four years old or five, I always liked to play with Lego. Um, the first time I got one was my uncle who gave me. And I started to watch these stop motion videos on YouTube. And I loved them. And it's something that I like to play. So I decided to start doing my own stop motions because I always like to 
play with Lego, and I always loved um, Star Wars, Marvel, DC, Batman, and all of that. So I put them together and made my own videos. So when you when when you made those videos, were did you did you learn? from like how did you learn that did you learn from watching other youtube videos or did you like it was just trial and error uh, i watched a lot of videos before i started doing my own um but it was practicing okay i didn't have any class or anything like that okay yeah so it's basically how i learned how to podcast <laughs> <laughs> I watched a bunch of YouTube videos and, and, and bought a bunch of stuff that I didn't need and then figured it out from there. So that, Hey, good on you, man. Cause that's, that's really what it takes is being able to, uh, you know, grab the ball and start running with something and figure it out on your own. That's the best way to learn. Leonardo, where do you fit into this whole, this picture? I, when I was a kid, my dad always bought me DVDs of movies. Then on Sundays, we would watch Star Wars, Marvel, DC, and play some video games with him. And then I had these toys in my closet. And every time I was alone, I tried to create a story and play with them. And that grew on me until now then when i met daniel and he he told me about his youtube channel i was really surprised because it's different to know someone who works with it and then i was talking to him one day and he said oh come on do you want to write a star wars script with me and i said my god yes please let me into this <laughs> <laughs> And then he showed me, it was Darth Vader episode four, right, Daniel? Yeah. That's and right. then he said, start writing. I write three pages of story just, that just came up from my mind. And I love to get what's inside my head into the paper. I always love to write short story, short stories fan fictions on on the internet <laughs> and this opportunity helped me to grow my creativity senses to write better i love to upgrade my techniques always techniques always and i'm really enjoying being a part of this it's an honor to work as one of the writers I can't thank enough for this. It's amazing. Awesome. Awesome. That's great, man. I, I think that, uh, you know, it was really interesting to me when I saw the finished product because it, it was about a year, right? It took you to finally, you know, get the whole thing done and finished. And I actually forgot about it. I forgot that I even did it. And, uh, we, I got the email. I was, I was sitting there with my girlfriend and I'm like, Hey, look at, I, well, I didn't say anything to her first, but I'm like, I'm, I'm watching it and I'm hearing myself. And she's like, is that you? Cause it, it, I'm like, yeah. And she's like, what is that? What are you doing? And I'm like, ah, this is this thing that I, I, I did a year ago. Remember, remember that I told you about that and we just never really talked about it again. And she's like, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and play this clip. You know, we've got one viewer right now and stay tuned and, and, and watch this clip because it's really interesting how they do it. As long as one man still stands against you, Matt Titan, you'll never be able to claim victory. Noble sentiments from one who is about to die. Adam Warlock. We tried to do this the easy way and failed. Now begins the conflict I strove to avoid. It is your turn now. <laughs> That's the best you can bring to challenge me? A child? Not even the galaxy's mightiest heroes could challenge me. 
What can this boy do? This is for Uncle Johnny, my sister, and my parents. Hey, kid. I got you. Look there. Thanos' body. That means Thanos is now vulnerable. What? No! Your reign as a supreme being is a blasphemy which cannot be allowed to stand. And by the power of the Infinity Gems, let everything be as it was before Thanos' snap. No! All right, well, sorry about the little lag there, but this is the character that I, I, I played. It was uh, Adam Warlock, and yeah, it's not... Me, you fools! You'll die for what you've done, bub! I don't... Ah, this drives me nuts. So that's we could keep doing that and it, it'll it'll keep stopping. I don't know. Maybe my internet, my bandwidth isn't as strong as I thought it was. Um, but the link to this this actual episode is in the description and in the show notes. So you guys can, if you're watching and you want to hear it and you want to see what they were doing, you can actually go to that ep- uh, go to that link and it'll take you directly to there. It's kind of interesting. I, I, I it takes probably a lot of cre- creativity to do that. So if you were to have to put a time on, on what it took you to do that one scene, how, how long would you say it, w- it was t- from beginning to end to create that? This scene took me a lot of time. I think it, I took one month to film, film and put the, the effects and the voices all took one month to this one scene. So is there any, is there any, uh, like you guys going to continue doing these and is there any aspirations to go further with this or take it to another level? Yes, absolutely. Um, I have these Avengers series for, I think since the beginning of my channel, um, and I plan to have three more episodes so I can finish it. Awesome, awesome. Um, what about you, Leonardo? I know you're you you teach English down there, right? Yes. Uh, what? I started three 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 weeks ago. Okay, okay. Is it a virtual a virtual thing where you're doing it from your computer, or is you actually in person? Both. Both. Okay. I go to the court course, and then I have some students that are here with me and another group that's on online that's online and i have to teach both ways it's it's crazy at the beginning but then i got the hand of the, of the thing well that's good that's good what about yourself daniel what do you what are you doing uh besides this and what do you do for your uh, you go to school or you work i go to college i i am doing ec- economy Okay. Um, and it's online for now. Yeah, that's what I want to ask you. What what uh, what effect did uh, did the pandemic have um, on Brazil? Like, where where exactly are you in Brazil? Because Brazil is a pretty big country. We are in Rio de Janeiro. Okay. Well, that, that that's the spot then, right? I mean, that's if, yes. if you're if you're gonna go to if you're gonna be in Brazil, that's where you want to be. Yeah, I'm jealous, it's the man. Main attraction in Brazil, and it's the one that has the big statue like this overlooking everything, yes. right? Yes. How how cool is that to to look up and see? Oh, it's really cool. Yeah, it's amazing because everything seems so small when you're up there. Uh huh. It's a amazing view of of the state of the of Rio. It's you you have to visit one day. I I would love to, man. I definitely would love to. Uh, what uh, what? So what? What was the pandemic like there for you? I mean, was it? Did you guys get? Did it affect you a lot? 
or did you not see a whole or did it did it affect you because you were having to lock down and and be uh you know in indoors and all that or was it affecting you because you actually saw devastation from it you know people were dying and being stacked up you know there's you see you know you saw the pictures in the in the news media all around where some places they were stacking bodies and you know from people that that had passed away from it so for you guys did you did you experience any of that or was it just kind of like you heard about it but didn't really see it um i didn't see because i i am part of the group of risk mm-hmm. um, okay but I have relatives who died because of it. Okay. Um, I lost my grandmother um, at this period, but I couldn't go to her funeral because of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. So it, and all my college online, um, so it affected a lot. All right. Well, I'm sorry for your loss, man. That, that, that's tough. What about you, Leonardo? Well, it's pretty crazy because when you were seeing on the television the deaths, the devastation that our countries are having, you don't imagine that this will happen to your country. And when the pandemic started in Brazil, I was in denial. I thought that this was going to be quick and would pass like this, but then the death rate started growing. Some decisions of our government were not so right. And I lost some friends because of COVID from the college. And I never thought that I would live that situation. When you read in the books, it seems so distant of reality. And now it's on our doorstep. It's my my college went full online. And I personally don't like online because I don't pay attention well, but I'm trying. And I'm literally at home for one year, one year and some months. I don't go out because I'm in group of risk too. Then I miss going to movie theaters, to meeting my friends, to get going on, going with my parents, beach. And it changed our lives a lot. You really start thinking about yourself, about what you are doing. It's overwhelming. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can imagine. I I know how that felt. I, I mean, I same thing. I've been I I stayed inside for you know a while. I didn't really go and do anything. You know, I've been st- for the last year. I've been literally banging out you know episode after episode after episode, and j- just trying to you know utilize my time the best that I can to build my brand and and my show and everything else. So, um, were you guys doing any like Zoom meetings with your friends or you know get-togethers or hangouts or anything like that? Yes, here we are uh, using a lot of Zoom meetings. Me and Daniel practically live on discord talking about a lot of things yeah so we are close but we are distant at the same time yeah yeah i can imagine so did you so during this whole thing if you had any uh like depression or you know dealt with any kind of mental health issues or you know just anything from being because we're not we're not meant to not connect with people right that's just uh, uh, as a species we we thrive on on connection right and and you know talking to people and being around people and and being around energies of people right yeah um for me it wasn't that bad thanks god because my family is part of the group of risk too mm-hmm. so this period we stay together more time than ever. Uh, so that was something positive 
if we can think that way of this pandemic, it's because I stayed more time with my family. For me, it's almost the same thing as Daniel because my mother is also a group of risk. My father don't, so he still goes to work. But my mother is in home home office, and we get a lot of we get a lot of cold clothes in this pandemic. Mm -hmm. But I real I have some anxiety. Okay. Um, that pandemics being at home, it was really frustrating for me at first because I kept watching the news and people dying and the virus receiving mutations and getting stronger and the vaccine was so far away from from us yet. But when I stopped watching this because it was bad for me, thinking the worst. I need to stop, have some time for myself. It was good and bad because I was able to discover a lot of things about myself. I was able to see a lot of TV shows that I never dreamed of watching. So it was good. Yeah. And actually, I now I talk more to my friends than the other when before the pandemics. Yeah, I, I I have that same that same experience myself. Um, I got a you know, it, I was constantly interviewing people, so it wasn't like I was not socializing. I was just socializing in a different way, and it was allowing me to still have that sense of connecting to folks without being there. But it really, it, you know, it it did it, it did affect me. There were there was a time there was a period there where I I got. Uh, where I wasn't wanting to wake up and I was wanting to sleep later. And I just, I felt myself slipping into like kind of slipping out of my routine. Let's just say that. And, and not really being myself and being okay with not, uh, you know, just staying in my pajamas for three days, you know, and just not, just not, not really caring about much, but, you know, luckily that only lasted for about two weeks and I pulled myself out of it. So, um, and I, and, and if you're watching out here, I'm not trying to turn this into a pandemic type of discussion. It's just, you know, it, it's not very often that I get to talk to people in different countries, especially a different, uh, you know, generation than me. You know, you guys are 19, 20 years old, right? That range. And, uh, I'm 47. So I'm almost 30 years your senior. So I really, you know, like to get different perspectives from people, especially about where they live. And, you know, especially about a place that I've always heard a lot about and I'd love to go to. Um, so tell me about, uh, what it, before the pandemic and all this stuff happened, right? And hopefully we're going to be able to go back to normal at some point, you know, and things will go, things will be the same and you know, it might be a little bit different, but at least there'll be some semblance of what it used to be like before March of 20, uh, 2020, right? Um, what was a day in the life of a, of a young adult going to school, uh, you know, playing soccer? I imagine you guys play soccer. I used to. You used to? <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. horrible at soccer. Are you, are you soccer fans? Do you watch yes. it or? Yes. Okay. I watch it. I'm not that fan, but I like it. I like soccer. That's a, that's oh, your yeah. that's your that's your state sport, right? Or national sport? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what what's what's a day in the light in the life of a of a young adult in Brazil po, uh, pre COVID? For me, it was really crazy <laughs> um, because I started going to college like one month before the pandemic. Um, and I was going there um, by public transport. And unfortunately here, they are not good. They have a really bad service. So it's really crazy um, because of this bad quality of transport. 
so you've never really actually had a chance to experience what going to college is like. No. Oh man, that's so that's so tough. Yeah. Especially when you, because when you get out of high school, man, that's what you look forward to. You go to college, you want to socialize, exactly. you want to, you know, meet girls, you want to, you know, all that stuff that goes along with it, right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. What about you, Leonardo? I had two years of college before the pandemic. I started. Like yeah. <laughs> so I got the socialize, socialize, being meet new persons. I haven't met any girl. Unfortunately, <laughs> but it's a it was a great a great experience, and then the pandemic started. And but my daily routine was wake up, get the public transport, go to college, and then get the public transport again to go to return home. And you meet a lot of different people in the public transport. <laughs> that is a wonderful experience of Rio de Janeiro. You, you can get in the bus and this next second you're talking to a grandma about their, their children, their family, and you're so into the other, the other life. We are very receptious, receptive with persons here. Then we can start a friendship, friendship out of nothing. So that I really miss that. Yeah, that's what I was gonna. That was gonna be my next question. Is it? Is it like? Because when you don't, when you when you're not from another country, you know, we just we get our our news view of what that place is like, or you know, maybe somebody had had you know gone there and, and you'd ask questions. But when you're not from there, you don't really know really about it. So. Is your culture like really inviting, you know, when the, when you've got, uh, uh, foreigners that are coming down? Let's, let's say, let's say I'm an American. I'm coming down there to visit as a tourist. Is it, uh, is it a safe place to go and, and, or, or is it like anywhere else? No, oh, where'd he go? Is it like, is it like anywhere else where you, uh, you know, there are certain places that you stay away from and there are certain places that you, that are good to go to. Yeah. Um, here, it, there are places that you shouldn't go, <laughs> uh, because they are really dangerous, but you come in here, the people are really receptive. Um, they respect you. They are, most of them are kind <laughs> to foreign um yeah i mean um, brazil is one of the countries who earn a lot of money from tourists mm. because that's the whole point of rio the economy of our city is mainly focused on tourists and we are a multicultural country so mm. We are very friendly with different persons. We want to accept the different. At least I am like that. I love to meet a lot of cultures, meet new genres of mu music, of movies, because I think that is living, right? Meeting new things, gaining experience. For ex when I... No, 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 when no, no I go ahead. Okay, when I began college, I I see myself as a really shy person a lot. And the people just say, come on, Leo, let's talk. Let's enter in our group. Let's have a conversation. That's amazing because I didn't feel lost any moment. That's great, man. That's great. Uh, let's see. What else can I draw from there? What's the food culture like there? Like what's your, what, what's, what's, what's one of your favorite dishes that are, uh, are foods to eat, uh, in your country? Um, well, my, um, I prefer Italian food <laughs> because my grandmother, the one who died, she is from Italy. Okay. So we always 
eat those this kind of foods and my favorite food is pizza <laughs> if i can eat pizza every day <laughs> i do it <laughs> That's a good choice. I like pizza too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I love meat steaks. It's my passion. Every day I, I try to eat a different kind and I try to make my own. Because I, I, it's the best food in the universe for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So up here they have the, the in in California there's a there was a little craze going on for a little while with restaurants that uh was like Brazilian um where you would they would bring you the meat and you would grill it right on your at at your table. What's that what's that called? It's almost like Brazil Brazilian barbecue or yeah, it's, yes, it's Brazilian barbecue. Yeah, I have yet to go uh, because uh, for the obvious reasons, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I really want to try it because I, I hear a lot of good things about it. So, oh, it's great. Uh, let's see, what else can we talk about here? Um, I'm, I think I'm. Oh, there's my dog coming to say to say hello. Hey, buddy, what's up? Um, so yeah, it uh, that, that's great, man. I, I really appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to talk to me, and uh, you know, sharing a little bit about your life and your culture. And uh, oh yeah, that was a question I was going to ask. Uh, what's the what's the language there? It's Portuguese. Portuguese. So Portuguese is kind of like a mix, a mashup of Spanish and, and, and something else. Or, I mean, it's, I remember that it has, uh, it almost has some Spanish words in it, but it, when you hear somebody talk, it doesn't sound like that though. Yeah, it's different, but there are some words that are the same or similar. Yeah. But because they, they're both, um, they both come from, uh, uh, now I don't remember how to say it in Latin. English, but Latin. Yeah, Latin. Both come from this. Um, but it's different. They are not like the same. I feel like every language comes from Latin at some, at, at yeah. some point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it's funny. All right. We also have some words that came from English, like delete. Here we have deletar. It's the same meaning. Okay. I think Portuguese is a, me a mesh of languages. It's a combination of a lot of languages. It's really complex. So as somebody whose English wasn't your first language, right? It, was it difficult for you to learn it? Because a lot of people say that English is one of the hardest languages to learn because of of all of the the same words that have the different have different meanings but it also has a lot to do with the intonation and and how you say them and how you pronounce them and and like the context you use them and so was it difficult for you to kind of get or understand or do you still like not understand some of the like some of the nuances of the language yeah, to be honest, it's easier to learn English than Portuguese. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but I still don't know everything about English, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but I know the basic. Uh, Portuguese has a lot of exceptions in our grammar. Uh, it's so crazy, Portuguese. I, I say to my friends, I talked about this with Leo. <laughs> a lot of times, um, I hate Portuguese. It's a, it's a so difficult language because you have a lot of time tenses, uh, past like English past. There are not too too many tenses um, in Portuguese. There are a lot <laughs> of past tenses to learn. At least four. Yeah. Oh wow! Really. Yeah, because yeah, I think of one word that I that comes to my mind when uh, see. So see, seen, and saw, and then saw is could be saw. It's spelled <laughs> the same way, but it's it's a different meaning. Uh, seen, 
Yeah, the, I think there's only three of those right there. So yeah, but there's other ones that too that that are that have more than that. So I I would imagine that it would be kind of difficult. Uh, but the nuance of the language is really what what the difficult part is because if you're not if you're not from from a certain area, you don't know the slang or the the you know the different the different like hip words to use you know the the kids use a, a little different language than you know maybe guys like me and then people that are older than me they use the language a little bit differently too so yeah that's it's definitely interesting i believe it's easier because a lot of movies games and series that we watch came originally in english so we have a lot of contact with the, the language For example, for me, I started learning English, playing video games when I was seven. I saw the text and I tried to imagine what to do. If I'm done right, then okay, this means that. And then it was really easy. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, so what were some of your favorite video games, uh, growing up? Did you play, uh, did you have like Sony PlayStation or Nintendo 64 or Nintendo original? Like what, what was your, what was your jam? Um, mine was PlayStation 2. My grandmother gave it to me because my, my father was against the idea of me playing video games. Um, I started playing Crash. Um, uh, Crash. Um, then I went to play Marvel Ultimate Alliance, um, Star Wars Force Unleashed. And I grew up playing those games and I still enjoy playing them on my computer because they are still available to play here. And just like Leo, I started learning English from video games. I mean, I started doing English course when I was seven something like that um and i my whole life i used english and i started my channel with the objective of learning english because it was a way to me for me to enjoy doing something and learning the language at the same time oh, that's great Leo? For, for, was the PlayStation 1 really the first? was my first ever video game. And one game that it's still with me to this day is Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 7. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite game of all time. And just like Daniel, Star Wars, for instance, Alicia, Star Wars Battlefront, a lot from Marvel. Now I'm still on PlayStation to this day, mm -hmm. hoping to one day get PlayStation 5. <laughs> well, I think I'll never stop playing video games. It's one of the, one of the amazing arts that exists to this day, for my, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a skill. I remember I, I, I'm not a big video game player. I play, uh, currently I play, uh, uh Oculus Quest. So the VR. And yeah, so that, that's really cool. But every time I would try to play any of the other games and I try to play with my friends, they would always beat the, beat me down and it would make me not want to play. I mean, like, cause I, I, they wouldn't let me give me a chance to learn it or do anything. They would just constantly just kill me, kill me, kill me. And I'm like, dude, I don't want to play no more, man. <laughs> This ain't no fun for me. <laughs> So, yeah, you know what, man? I really appreciate you guys taking the time uh, to come out and talk to me and explain a little bit about what you do and, and you know, share your, your you know, everyday life uh, and, and what life is like for you and your in, in Brazil. And then also, you know, giving an explanation about what you do with the, uh, the stop motion and the uh, Lego Avenger series and, you know, the reason why we're actually even here. So. Anybody that's watching, uh, I tried to put it on. I had a clip of, of, uh, you know, what I voiced over in a scene, um, for what, for the, the production that they did. But for whatever reason, I need to call the cable company and I guess get faster internet uh, so it can handle the bandwidth of the stuff that I'm doing. Um, one thing that I need to, I need to make a couple of announcements real quick. One of them is, uh, every 
Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Check out the Pecora. Uh, hold on a second. Where we got? Check out the Real Untouchables. It's right down here on the uh, on the the ticker tape. There, the Pecora Files is a new series. Watch it live Sundays, 5 p.m. P- Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern, on YouTube at Real Progress and Action YouTube channel, or the Real Progressives Facebook group. And what this is about is the you know the I I the con, which was a true crime documentary series that I was able to screen, uh, is basically a, a, an extension of that series. It's a five part series and it's about the 2008 financial crisis and real, what really happened. And, you know, it's a, so the big short was the movie that, you know, we all kind of know about, you know, and the mainstream, but this, this documentary, and the Pecora files and the, and the uh, real untouchables actually goes deeper into it and touches on everything that the big short didn't get right. So from whistleblowers to, you know, really important people that had their, their finger on the pulse of what was going on. Uh, they're there. It's an amazing, uh, uh, content that's available for free. You just got to go check it out. Uh, the con is not for free, but if you go to the con dot TV, that's T H E C O N dot TV. You can actually check out the first episode for free and then you can rent it for 14 days for $10. It's worth the money. Let me, uh, trust me, man. I saw it. I watched it three times. So that's six, six times three. That's 18 hours of, of, uh, uh, of footage that I watched on this. And I just, I, I had to keep watching it, man. I was like, Oh my God, I can't believe this is like, this is telling me everything that, you know, all that. So. Yeah. And then also too, uh, if anybody's out there on clubhouse, uh, I have a club called nowhere to go, but up on clubhouse and you can actually go in there and join the club. And I start, and I have rooms, I have rooms that I talk about different things like I do on this show from mindset to behavioral change to addiction, uh, nutrition, um, you know, mental health, all the stuff that kind of goes in under the umbrella of nowhere to go, but up because I mean, look, that's the, the, that's pretty vast, man. We can be at that point in our life or society or anywhere, uh, you, we can apply, you know, God, I got nowhere to go, but up, man, Jesus, how, <laughs> so yeah. Um, other than that, uh, you guys got anything else you want to plug? I know that I have, uh, some, uh, stuff for you guys here. Your YouTube channel is, uh, right there. We also, like I said before, just go ahead and go into the description. All of the direct links will be in there. All you got to do is hit them and it'll take you right to their YouTube channel where you've got how many videos do you got on there, uh, Daniel? More than 100. (laughs) More than 100. Okay. Yeah. You got, you got quite a bit of stuff on there. So go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, you've got a membership club as well on YouTube, right? Is that, uh, is, is that a free membership or is it something that you kind of, the, the membership goes to help you fund what you're doing? No, it's a paid membership. It's a way to support me. Um, it's pretty cheap, cheap. It's $1.99. Um, and you get some perks for joining this membership. Like you get badges and, um, emoji. Um, exclusive access to some movies because I get episodes uh, with their arc and I put them together making a movie. Um, and you have early access to all my videos. I post them early to the members. They have something like five, seven days of early access and then I release to all to everyone to watch. That's awesome. All right. Yeah. So $1.99, that, that isn't, that, that's nothing, man. I have a, I have a membership right now that, that I don't even use that I pay $10 a month for. And it's like, dude, two ninety nine or $1.99. That's, that, that's a drop in the bucket. You probably spill that much when you, when you spill a Coke. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So take a look at their membership club if you're interested in that. Uh, also you can catch them on Instagram as well. 
And this is actually the uh, production that I voiced the actual scene, or not the scene, but the the episode of uh, Infinity Gauntlet. And you also had some books that you suggested. One was Creating Character Arcs, Masterful Author Guide to Uniting Story, Structure, Plot, and Character Development, written by K.M. Wyland. What, uh, is it, was that a good book? Yeah. Oh, it's a great book. Um, I read this to learn about the, yeah, the <laughs> creating character arcs, um, because I did courses about writing scripts and about movies itself. Um, so my teachers suggested this book and it's amazing, um, because it really learn, you really learn how it works, the arts, how to construct it and create. And I loved it. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, thank you. To identify these subjects in the movies. Five, five, dim five dimensional? What? What, what? What did you say? It was five what? No, I said it, it's really good to identify. Oh, okay. Okay. The, when you study and see the movie and, oh, look, I studied that. And yeah. It's pretty fun. Okay. It's I, fun. I get what you're saying. I, mean, I, I misunderstood what you were saying. Okay. And then the podcast suggestions that you have is uh, Manseo Wayne and Radio Midgar. And those are podcasts. And we, we talked a little bit about those as well. So... Yeah, like I said, I appreciate everything. Uh, we're going to wrap this up here. Um, I hope to see more from you, uh, in the future, both of you. And, uh, don't, you know, feel free to reach out to me and, uh, let me know if you want me to help you promote anything. I'll shoot it up and, you know, my stuff. I like what you're doing. You're doing something positive. You're keeping yourself busy. You're creative. I think it's amazing, man. I think it's great. Yeah. I wanted to thank you for this opportunity. Um, it was my pleasure to be here and yeah, there are a lot of videos coming out soon. Like when we finish here, I'm going to film it's right over there and I am filming my Batman series season two, episode five. It will, it will be something huge and yeah. Thanks for having me here. Well, thank I'll you. Say, thanks. It was an amazing experience. In fact, my first podcast that I participate. So it was really fun. And thank you for everything and keep up with the, with the good job. It's well, amazing what you do. I, well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. And you know, you're, you want to start a podcast too. So here's your first, you know, dipping your toe in kind of what it's like, you know? Hopefully yes. it was a good good experience for you, and uh, hopefully it won't be your last one. Hopefully you do plenty more down the road. Uh, so go ahead and hang out after this, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you once we take this out uh, of intro or outro, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and for everybody else out there that's been watching this evening, thank you. I appreciate you stopping by. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said before, uh, if you want to help support me and what I'm doing, uh, feel free to hit the, uh, go over to Patreon. It's in my, it's in my, uh, uh, in the episode description. Jesus, I can't talk tonight. You think I drank something, but I don't drink. Um, yeah, the episode description and, uh, you know, check out what I'm doing. I've got five different tiers over there. Uh, and they're really, they're really affordable from a dollar, three, four. Uh, five and ten and you know you, you get a lot of uh, value over there and you know obvious honestly for the three dollars uh tier you get uh early access for uh episodes that are unedited and the only thing i really do to them is i take them from when i get them I do a little bit of audio leveling. So, you know, it sounds good. And then I just ship, put it over there. I don't cut anything out. So that's a great, a great value there. If you don't want to listen to me fumbling around doing this in, in, uh, in the audio, uh, version. So uh, until next time, uh, I have another one scheduled next week. I've got maybe three of them on the schedule for next week. So, uh, we'll take, wait for that. They'll be, they'll, you'll, you'll see them. I'll, uh, 
I, when I schedule them, they show up on uh, Facebook anyway. So until next time, you guys have a good evening and a great weekend. You've been listening to the Nowhere to Go But Up podcast. Sean is a single dad, a union blue collar guy, and he spent time in federal and state prison for drug trafficking and fraud. When he was released from prison in 2006, all he had was the clothes on his back, a bag of mail, and some paperwork. Since then, he's turned his life around and shares the struggles and successes on this podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we hope you were moved to connect to the show. Book a guest spot. For merch, Patreon, PayPal, and social media links, go to linktr.ee slash nowhere to go but up. On Instagram at nowhere to go but up now. On Twitter at but up now. On the YouTube channel at nowhere to go but up podcast. See you next time.